What is true when it's all digital? What's true when you can't touch, when you can't feel, when you can't hear the breathing? What we've been through has been so difficult. And I realized that I missed so much the sound of going to the theater and hearing the band start and knowing this was going to be great. And just that sense of just a surrender into, into, into illusion, into worlds, and into all the things of comfort that that brings. And I thought, we'll do a musical because a musical is so accessible. And I thought that a musical would be a great way to come at the pandemic because it allows all the space for the emotions that we've been going through and a lot of space for reflection. Because I feel like this um, pandemic has come at me and come at me and come at me and come at me and come at me. And there hasn't been a moment off. And I think that's common. And there hasn't been a moment to reflect and go, what was that like? And how do I feel about it? So partly, we're gonna do a musical that offers that space, that offers that kind of, if you're listening and if you enjoy it, you're gonna have some space in there to reflect on your experience and theirs and feel less alone. So what's happening this week is that the, the two lead cast plus the backing vocalists plus the supporting cast are all coming in down here and they're kind of performing their parts. But this is a legendary studio, uh, the Dean Street Studios, Heart of Soho. It's a very atmospheric kind of red room and there's chandeliers and there's guitars all over the walls and everybody's been here, David Bowie, you know, everybody. This is kind of sort of, this is where musicians come to kind of, to be. Morning. Good morning. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, How are you? Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are two lead characters in this musical. Uh, one is called Rose. She's 25. Uh, she's uh, kind of moved to London and she's been here. And then just as she was kind of getting settled, the pandemic happened and, and the big new start sort of stopped. And the other character is in, is in Kyoto. He's in Japan. He's going through a quarter-life crisis, trying to work out who he is. He's been living somebody else's life. He wants to live his own life now. It's two young people who are on opposite sides of the world and connecting as we have been doing. They're people going through it like we've all been through it. That's who they are. And their stuff is very personal, and but yet I think very widely shared. Killed it. Oh, Killed it. it. <laughs> It's pretty easy what you guys do, actually. What, what, just sit here? Just, and... like, no, just acting and so you just say something. Usually when you get a character or a script, you're like, okay, let me figure out how, like, I can connect to this. You know, what have I been through that will evoke that same emotion so I can do this scene properly? And they were like, so she's at home trapped on Zoom during a pandemic and she's quite lonely. <laughs> and I was like, great, this is very easy to connect yeah. to. And I think everyone who listens to it will be like, yeah, that's pretty relatable. There's actually some, there's a whole new <laughs> arc where you and I just yeah. talk about Jeff's it. song. I'm so yeah. sorry. No, you weren't. The character I play, Rio, um, he goes through uh, quite an identity he crisis. He has a hell of an arc. Yes, he does. Um, <laughs> and I think a lot of the questions he's asking other characters and asking himself is something that a lot of people can relate to. Um, and he's at a real turning point in his life as well. And I think for... Um, your character, Rose, as well. Like It's just those crossroads that we find ourselves in in certain points in our lives. Um, he's definitely at one of them, and he's asking yeah. these very massive, pivotal questions of, OK, is this going to be the rest of my life? All of them. So it's only fair, right? <laughs> do you need us to come Yeah, I think we should work? do some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to do realisation. OK. okay. Realisation. Oh, I see what you did there. You're on fire. Jeff has gone to your head. Um, Steve, are you listening? If you're listening... No, he's gone off earlier. Oh, okay. Couldn't take it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Are you going to dance? Yeah. When I had this idea that we were going to do a musical, the first thing I did was listen to all the great emerging composers. And one stood out absolutely above all, and his name is Theo Jameson. And Theo uh, has won you know, Emerging Talent Awards in th musical theatre. He's worked in all the big West End shows as musical supervisor and musical director. Um, and he is a phenomenal talent. He has written a score um, uh, which has the most incredible range of textures and colours and emotions. 
Uh, you will, if you listen, I think, I hope, cry. You will be deeply moved. You will laugh. There is joy. And he brings um, an incredible deft ability to compose for an orchestra, because there's an orchestra, as well as many sort of specialist musicians, because we are involving lots of session players in this too, uh, and pull together a kind of huge canvas, if that doesn't sound too ridiculous of 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 color and texture and picture and mood and atmosphere and he's as they say in sport left it all out on the field it's 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 it's, it's a it's a big work i don't know how to turn well i mean it's fine i mean it's, it's real it's, it's unless they, unless they sing non-stop um Thea, do you, do you just wanted to look towards where should you look uh, at the beginning of December last year, Simon Pitts called me up and said that he wanted to create a musical for radio, which took in the COVID pandemic. And we basically spent all of the month of December kicking around ideas and working out what we wanted to do. Simon's kind of headline aim was to do something which had a sense of joy and catharsis. We wanted to do something that was a romance, but a romance that took place in the very peculiar sort of uh, boundaries of this current time. Simon and I spent December basically knocking around ideas and working out who our characters were and what the story was going to be. Um, and then seven weeks later, we actually had a draft. Do you want to meet me? Yeah, I need to get back to this meeting. Thanks, guys. Cool. Uh, just hold there. I need to do some copy, copy, calm. Thank you. Um, Once Johnny. I got Theo Jameson involved, uh, I realized that we would need a very experienced music producer to come in. And um, so I'd worked with Steve Levine a bit before on the radio. Steve is a producer of many kind of legendary bands like Culture Club from the 1980s. And he's also produced the Beach Boys and the Clash. Um, and Steve has the sort of knowledge and the capacity to 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 sort of bring in the multiple elements. Steve. Steve, can you hear me? Hello. I think this, the classic thing has happened, you know, realization. Could we, um, the end of the piano has been chopped off, just the last chord. Uh, this is Steve Levine, who is our music producer and who's putting all of this together in Liverpool. And he, his car. <laughs> Steve. So, um, on realization. Yeah, I think it's just the same thing that happened on the other couple of tracks, which is just the end of the piano tracks. I'll been cut send off. you just the piano track. I'm sorry. I was mixing the Hush Tones album, and this was just before Christmas. And Simon called me on a Zoom call to discuss a project, which I didn't know what it was then. And I was just finishing the track, and he said, "What's that you're playing in the background?" I said, oh, I'm just finishing the Hush Tones album. It's going to come out in where we are now. He said, let me hear it, let me hear it. And I sort of played a bit. And he went, oh, God, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. And then nothing more was said about it. He said, oh, I really like the sound of that. It sounds really good. And he, then he said, well, I'm working on this idea. I'd really like you to produce the music. That was the starting point. Simon, can you do the clean version of what you just said for the camera? About consolidating the files is a nightmare. <laughs> Now it's complicated because it's lockdown and Steve lives in Liverpool. And so we're doing this in three sites really. One is London where, where you're filming, where we're filming this. Two is Liverpool where Steve is kind of bringing the tracks together. Three is Salford, Manchester, where the BBC Philharmonic are playing and recording. Um, and, uh, and so we're sort of, we're sort of, so Steve is at the kind of the, the heart of all of this and creating tracks and, 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 and bringing everything together and feeding us here in London, the, the sort of um, the demo files for the singers to sing against. Five mics, they've got one each. Oh, okay. Um, then treat that as, I mean, don't bounce them down, but treat that as a bus, but then just do an, uh, the whole lot. Three times. So although Theo and I have never physically met, because we've had so many Zoom calls and so much backwards and forwards with, can I just play you this bit? Can I hear this bit? I feel I know him quite well, and I'm really very, very impressed with the writing. I really am. I think it's it's of a very high standard. Hi. Come in, come in. Hey. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. What the hell is this? Thank you for doing this. Thank you. This is very tall. <laughs> <laughs> so high. Oh. This is just right. Yes, yeah. 
Okay. Going into the recording studio, having uh, spent the entire writing process essentially alone in my room, is basically the equivalent of a line drawing suddenly being fleshed out in full color, suddenly becoming a photo. Um, the amount of uh, life and humanity that the actors bring to it cannot be underestimated. If you imagine what the actors are getting when, they, um, when they're rehearsing this, they're getting voice memos of me speaking into my phone, maybe singing along with me busking it at the piano, or me singing along to MIDI output from computer programs. And then the, uh, the other side of that is when they come into the studio, I suddenly see this thing absolutely in three dimensions with all of their humanity and all of their character brought to it. It's, um, it's incredibly exciting. Um, That's great. Great. That's Amazing. See you through the glass. Music makes all artist devotion feel better. Hey, Rose, it's Rio. I'm really sorry. I know you're in a meeting. Can you talk? Can you talk? Please, can you talk, Rio? Like, am I stupid? Am I stupid? Hey, I'm just logging onto this meeting. What's wrong? Hey, yes, I... Please, can you... Forget it. I'm calling. Come on. Come on, pick up. Pick up. Hey, what's going on? I'm... Nothing okay, Rose. Hey, Rose, I, I'm sorry. I'm such an... Listen, when... Calm down. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I'll mute. I'll be right back. Rio, this isn't cool. I know. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm just... I'm sorry. Did you still want to meet me? Ugh. Because I want to. I want to. I'm really sorry. I so much happened and I thought it was fast. It is fast. But this, this is actually the only thing that I know that I want to do is meet you. I know it's a crazy world right now and I know it won't be easy to do, but we can find a way. Rio, I don't know if you're in the right place for this. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's too late. Maybe I missed my chance. But it's what I know. It's all I know that I want to. So I'm saying it. I'm asking you. If you want to, do you want to meet me? Rio, I need to get back to this meeting, but... I do. I was listening last night to what we'd done so far, and I found it so emotional. And I... <laughs> Honestly, I felt it so emotional, and I, um, it's just the idea of the loneliness, and so there is a sort of cathartic emotional response to this, um, because um, what we've been through has been so difficult, and what we're doing in the musical is recognizing that, and re-emphasizing our connection. Fine then, me too. Is that right? What I'm really proud of in this piece is that it's like fully exists within the context of COVID, but is fundamentally a very joyful piece mm -hmm. about being alive, realizing that your life is not on hold just because there's a pandemic going on. And I would just be very pleased if anyone at the end was like, that was really nice. I really liked the songs. It cheered me up. Right. <laughs> I think in this last year, when so many of the things which define our lives have vanished, we have suddenly, for better and for worse, had to rely on our imaginations for how we live our lives. I think if we've done our jobs well, listening to this piece, you will get the feeling of being in the brains of these two characters. We're aiming for something that's incredibly direct, that we're, you're very, very close to these people. You're right inside them, you uh, go with their their hills and their valleys. You kind of take that ride with them. When they feel something, you feel what they're feeling. And I think the thing about radio and audio in general, podcast, whatever it is, is that you 
it's so intimate that you start um, painting yourself. You start painting in what they look like and where they are. Um, you know, your mind is free. And there's something about that intimacy that will, I hope, allow audiences to kind of see themselves and their own situations that we've all been facing this last year in what the characters have been through and what they're going through. Yes, you can listen on the radio or on your, in your earphones, but um, we're also doing an animated feature. I hope that anybody listening uh, enjoys it, of course. I hope that they find some uh, reflection of their own experience in it. I hope we've treated it with dignity, and I hope they feel consoled and less alone. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the BBC World Service.